the Lord keeps reminding us to trust him. He continues to remind us to trust him. I don't know if you've ever been in a place where trust was an issue, but I have. Especially when you can't see the one you're trusting in. And that's where our faith comes in. But most of all, that's where the word of God comes in. Trusting his word because he is an omnipotent God. He's an omniscient God and he's omnipresent. Heads are bowed, eyes are closed. God, we thank you for the power of your Holy Spirit. We thank you for your presence. Thank you for letting us feel your presence, Lord. Thank you for reminding and reassuring us that you won't leave us. It's rough, Lord. It gets mighty tough sometimes. Some of us may not even want to admit it, but it gets downright hard sometimes. But we thank you so much that you will always send your comforter to step in and let us know that everything is all right. Talk to us, Lord. Talk through us in these few words. Allow them to be food to our souls. You've already sent your word. We just want you to close it out. In the name of Jesus the Christ, amen. To God be the glory for everything that he has done, is doing, and will do in every one of our lives. We're so grateful today for Minister Marshall, our worship leader, for how she continues to stand even in the midst of trying times, trying to go to school, trying to get prepared for ordination, and all the other things that we don't know about. God bless you for the service that you render unto the Lord. Good to have Reverend Birch back in the house. <clears throat> God bless you. It's good to see you. I know you've been in the virtual world, but it's good to see you in the house. Amen. To all of you, our officers, our visitors, our friends, God bless you for stopping by to see us today. And we pray that your coming is not in vain. My friend Javon is here again today, and we thank God for him, and I believe he brought somebody with him. Amen. God bless you. Amen. He, he texted me last Sunday. He said, I'll be back, and I'm going to bring somebody with me. He's a man of his word. He brought somebody with him. So thank you so much to all of our family in the virtual world. God bless you, and to this uh, Black History Month and all of the things that have happened prior to us that causes us to be where we are. We're grateful to God for all of those things. I keep bringing to mind Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King, and I know there were things that happened before Martin, but Martin was significant in every one of our lives, and we thank God for him. I'm, I'm not, I promise you, God knows I promise you, I'm not going to hold you long because the Holy Spirit has already said, do what I said and sit down. So I'm going to do what he said and I'm going to sit down because I try to be obedient Amen. in everything. And Reverend Metcalf taught me, it ain't that you try, you got to do it. Right. So I got to do it. I got to be obedient. The scripture that was read in your hearing, and let me just thank God for the man of the house at 6629 Ricks Road. He don't travel much. Uh, but he's still the head of the house, at that house. Amen. 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 First Corinthians chapter 15, verse 58. 
Thank you, Sister Lenora, for reading that word. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 58. The word of the Lord as declared by the Apostle Paul to his first letter to the church at Corinth says, Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. I've had this scripture in my heart in my spirit for over a month now. I even tried to give it to the young adults to talk about last week, but God interrupted that. But I, and, and this week, the Lord spoke to me and said, I didn't give it to you for you to give to them. I gave it to you for you to talk about. Isn't it amazing how God can slap you and, you, and never even feel a hand? Amen. I, just, I don't really have a subject. You can tag it with anything you want, but I'm, I'm just going to give what God gave me. This verse concludes a chapter that details the future resurrection of our earthly bodies. Paul encouraged the Corinthian church to remain faithful to everything he had taught them. You see, when we see the word therefore in a scripture, we should always back up to see why it is there. What is the therefore therefore? The word usually indicates a summation of what was previously stated. In this case, Paul addresses those who had fallen away from his original teaching on the resurrection. He said, my beloved brethren. The Apostle Paul addresses us as family, brothers and sisters, and we should address ourselves as brothers and sisters. Christians are a part of a family that cares deeply for one another. Amen. The church is the visible expression of caring love. And though we sometimes feel alone, we belong to the family of God. Though sometimes we fall out, we belong to the family of God. Paul's brothers and sisters in Corinth are embracing heresy and introducing destructive ideas contrary to the gospel. Paul restates that the truth of Jesus' death for sin and bodily resurrection and then exhorts them to remain firm in that teaching. He first of all says, be ye steadfast. That is, don't always be moving around. Get somewhere and sit down. Have you ever noticed that your children, your grandchildren, nieces or nephews have what I call the tapping disease? They drum their fingers on the dinner table, swing their feet, tap their feet, constant motion. Can't always say it's children. They don't settle down. It can drive a person loony. That's how I explain my own particular condition sometimes. Don't know how to be still. Be steadfast means be stable, be firm. The Greek word alludes to sitting in a chair rather than pacing around. Fixed. To be steadfast and unmovable is to be spiritually grounded. 
A steadfast person knows what he or she believes and cannot be, as Paul says to the church at Ephesus in uh, Ephesians 4 and 14, tossed back and forth with waves and blown here and there by every wind and teaching. An unmovable person can hear false teachings, engage doubters, and defend truth without shaking his or her faith. In 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 3, Paul expresses his concern for this church. He said, I am afraid that just as Eve was deceived by the serpent's cunning tricks, your mind may somehow be led astray from your sincere and pure devotion to Jesus Christ. Even believers who have been personally taught by the Apostle Paul became victims of deception. Now, if they became vic victims, how much more vulnerable are we? To remain steadfast and unmovable, we have to know the word of God. 2 Timothy 2 and 15 says, be diligent to present yourselves approved to God as a workman who does not need to be ashamed, but rightly dividing the word of truth. To accurately handle the word of truth, we must not only read the Bible, but we must also allow it to become a part of us. Its truth should penetrate our minds and our hearts so it shapes our thinking and our actions. It should also fill our minds that it's, it should so fill our minds that we detect error when we hear it and hear it and not participate in it. Satan, my brothers and sisters, uses scripture for his own purpose, twisting it around as though it says something that it does not say. Luke 4, 9 through 11, if we have not been diligent or thorough or hardworking in the scripture, in our study and meditation on the truth, we are vulnerable to error. The false religions of the world can be persuasive when, we quote, when they quote Bible verses to support their error. Even Christians can be deceived or tricked by smooth-sounding heresies or deviations if they do not have a solid grounding in the whole counsel of God. Let me just remind us that it is God's desire that we grow daily in our understanding of him and his word so that we will remain faithful to the end. I'm going to hurry up and go to my seat. But I encourage us, don't get tired. Don't get discouraged. Don't get bummed out. All Christians get to those places where they feel like giving up. This verse helps when we feel overworked and unappreciated. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding, in the work of the Lord. Do not be moved from place to place. Stand like a stature. When you stand like that, some folk might call you stubborn. You see, we can be stubbornly opposed to God's will, and that's a bad thing. But we can also be stubbornly doggedly devoted to God so that circumstances and people don't distract you from him. And that's a good thing. Call it persistence, but I call it faithful. The word says always abounding in the work of the Lord. The word translated abounding means 
exceeding a fixed number or measure over and above. Like, 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 and I gotta use you right now, Loretta. Like, like she did at the school, she went over and above what she was supposed to do. That's how she got recognized. So when we go over and above, putting our faith in God, God sees us where we are and he'll come to our rescue. Some people do what's expected. Others, out of love, go far beyond that. Their lives pour out and overflow, doing what you ask. They're doing the work of the Lord, not just a good word. Some folks say, I work five or six days a week, and when I get home, I just want to work. I just want to rest. That's understandable. But do we have any loafers on the job? You know what loafers are? People who only do the minimum. And only it, that's only if the boss is looking over their shoulder. And who takes up the slack? It's those conscientious workers that take up the slack. Well, God's work is the same way. Just a few of the ways we work for the Lord is to build his kingdom here on earth, is to teach our children about Jesus before they get to church. Teach them at home, teach them in Sunday school, serve, <clears throat> serve as ushers and serve as choir members, serve on different auxiliaries in the church, encourage those believers who are down, reach out to, to those that are lost and broken hearted. Stop just hanging around the ones you know. Just grab somebody else and let them know where you are I once was, but it was by the grace of God that I am. <clears throat> where I am right now. We can do a lot of things. Yeah, my brothers and sisters, this is a word for all of us. Always be abounding in the work of the Lord. Always above and over. Go beyond. Amen. Then you'll know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Some people hate washing dishes because it seems like the more dishes you wash, Isn't there something to wash dishes in the evening and get up in the morning and there's some more dishes in the sink? It's like the rats ate at night and put the dishes in the sink. It's always sweeping and vacuuming is the same way. You vacuum the floor, turn around, and need there's somebody else that tracks some more dirt in. Something's going on. It seems like there's no end. You get discouraged, and it's only when we consider the alternative that we can get out of uh, our Hoover vacuum cleaner and have, have another go at it. We keep on doing it because there's a need for it to be done. Let me just tell you, your spouse may not keep track of how often you change the spark plugs. Your husband has no idea how often you dust. But let me tell you, God keeps track of your faithfulness in his work. He sees us serving him when nobody else sees us. He sees us hanging in there, and, and he sees that, that our hearts are pure, and that brings joy to the heart of the Lord. Our Christian service is not done in vain for three reasons, and I'm going to my seat. First of all, Christ's kingdom is built on our service. Stone upon stone, act of kindness upon teaching the junior boys Sunday school class, serving refreshments upon spending time with a grief-stricken believer. Secondly, seeing your faithful service brings joy to God's heart. Thirdly, God will reward us for our faithfulness, even when nobody else sees it. His ledger book gets fresh notations every time we serve him. That's why we ought not to do things for man to see. That's why what we do for Christ is only going to last. A word, your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Yeah, I get discouraged. God knows I get discouraged, but God keeps on bringing us back to this verse 
to lift us up and to help us see the importance of faithful service. So my brothers and my sisters, as I close today, I admonish you, don't give up. Don't, don't quit. Uh, your, your, your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Stand like a statue. That's what I'd use if I used the subject. Stand like a statue. When I think of a statue, I quickly think of the statue of liberty. Anybody gonna pray with me? She stands tall. Yeah, she stands in the rain. She stands in the snow. She stands through the thunder. She stands through the lightning. Somebody ought to say amen. She stands through the hurricanes and she stands through the tornadoes. Yes, she stands when times are rough and she stands when times are tough. Now I know that somebody is thinking, well that statue is made out of copper and it's not flesh and blood. Well yeah, I know that because I did some research on it. But she's a good example of being steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. So my brothers and my sisters, when storms press you down, you ought to stand up taller. When burdens get heavy, you ought to stand up taller. When storms rise in your life, you ought to say God is with me. You ought to stand up and say, not only is he my help, but I can raise my hand and say I'm steadfast. I'm unmovable. I'm not going to be shaken. I'm not going to be torn down because I serve a God that will pick me up when I fall down. I serve a God that will make a way out of no way. I serve a God that told me upon this rock I'll build my church at the gates of hell. Be steadfast in whatever you do but make sure that what we do, we do it for the Lord and not for man. Be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Amen. What an awesome message, you all. She told us to be determined in whatever we do for God. Whatever you do for God. And that stands for all of us, whether we are already seasoned in the Lord or whether we are babes in Christ. When you make a decision to join the church and then join Christ, you have to be determined that you're going to stand by that decision. Because that's when the enemy goes on attack. Whenever you, whenever you make a decision to work for Christ, that's why that scripture's in there. He tells you to be steadfast and unmovable. Mm -hmm. What an awesome message. The doors of the church are open. There may be someone here today who is without a church home. Well, welcome to Parkwood and welcome to your new home. Yeah. If you so desire to, to be a part of this family, we welcome you. Our arms are open. We are all children of God in this building. We all belong to the one true living God. We serve him together in unity. If you're not a member, you'd like to be a member, come on down. We're going to help you walk through what serving him in unity is. We can't guarantee you that we're perfect, but we strive for, for, for perfection. We fall out sometime. We may go years and years and years, but to God be the glory, there comes a day when all of that breaks down and we, we come together. We, we come together. We make a decision that we're going to love each other regardless. Again, the doors of a church are open. 
we're offering Christ to you and we're offering the hand of the church to you. The altar is open for prayer as well. There may be someone who's desiring to have a, a chat with God and you'd like to do it here around the altar where the altar is open and you're welcome to come down. If you don't want to come down and you don't feel like you need to come down to talk for you, you can come down and talk to somebody else. Yeah. We're here to help one another. That's what service is all about, serving each other. That's our purpose. That's, that's our purpose, is to take care of one another. You know, so often we run around trying to figure out, what's my purpose, what's my purpose? Well, start by being good to your sister or your brother and showing them love. Amen. 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 If there is anyone else who'd like to come, for grandparents who bring their youth. Amen. Amen. Thank for the youth. Thank you for the youth who come willingly to bring what they have to Christ. You know, I can just imagine this granddaddy needing some support. If there's anybody out there that's a grandparent and know how you pray dearly for your grandchild, come and support this grandfather. He brought his grandchildren down here. Come on, y'all. Open your hearts to this gentleman. You know, most of the time it'd be the grandmama that bring the children, but granddaddy brought the children. Come and support him and support these children. When we look out for one another, then God looks out for us. That's a guarantee. For those of you that are in your seats, it's our right to remain. We're all going to pray. Amen. Let us bow our heads in prayer. Gracious God, just one more time while we're gathered together in this beautiful edifice, we're, we're surrendering to you in unity. We come as a family, Lord, and we're offering ourselves to you. Heavenly Father, let your will be done in our lives. We're not asking for any more than what your will is because your will is perfect. It's a good and perfect will for our lives. Father, forgive us. Forgive us for all of our sin. Things that we have done by word, thought, and deed. Gracious God, we pray that you reign on the just, and the unjust because that's what your word tells us heavenly father we pray this afternoon for this grandfather and his grandchildren that came with him heavenly father we don't even need to know the issues or the problems we just know that we come as a family and we're supporting him and whatever the need is we're trusting you the choir sung for us just a little while ago, I will be with you. Those were your words to us. So we want this grandfather and his grandchildren to know that you're with them, no matter circumstances or situations. In fact, God, we want everybody in the building to know that you're with them, that you're with us. Heavenly Father, and these words are just a reassurance because we've all been through things whereby we know it was only you that brought us out of it. Whether it was a sickness, a financial responsibility, our children were gone astray and we didn't know where they were or what they were doing. God, it just, whatever the situation was, it could be a homeless situation or we're without a car and can't get to work. We could be without a job, whatever the situation was. God, you, we know that you were in control of the situation. Father, thank you for being God. 
thank you for being God and for being God all by yourself. Father, thank you for healing and restoration. Most of all, God, thank you for salvation. For if it had not been for the shedding of the blood, there would be no remission of sin. We couldn't bow before the throne this afternoon and say, forgive us, God. There are times when you told us to go to the left and we went to the right. There are times you told us to go straight, we turned around and went the other way. Heavenly Father, forgive us when we make wrong choices, when the right choice stands us, stares us in our faces, God. Heavenly Father, use us. Use us for your glory. Heavenly Father, use us. Use every part of us, every fiber of our being. Just use it so that we can display our relationship with you, so that people can see just how good you are. Heavenly Father, we pray this afternoon for those that have siblings that are not well. Father, we pray you disperse angels around them, wrap your loving arms around them, and strengthen us who are praying for them. Heavenly Father, let your will be done in their lives. Cover all of us. Heavenly Father, cover our pastor this afternoon as she makes her way back home up that wet, rainy highway, God. Clear the pathway. Get everybody out of her way and make it straight and smooth. We're trusting you. We're depending on you to take care of her because she's obedient to your word, God. We pray, Heavenly Father, that you keep your loving arms wrapped around um, Reverend Birch, Heavenly, and her entire family, Father. Thank you for allowing her to come back with us and be present with us in the physical, God. Lord, you're a miraculous God. And I know it don't take all day to say thank you, but sometimes you just can't help but just say thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. Thank you for all that you've done, and thank you for all that you're going to do. Heavenly Father, we delight ourselves in your word, God. Your word is a lamp into our feet and a light unto our pathway. Heavenly Father, move the stumbling blocks. We're going to be so careful, Lord, to give you all praise, honor, and glory for being God. Help us as we begin our fast, Jesus. Help us to follow the guide that the pastor has created for us. Heavenly Father, open our minds and our hearts and let them be clear to you and receptive. We ask it all in the name of Jesus. You did say whatsoever you ask in my name. And there's just one more thing, God. <laughs> Bless this choir. They are so anointed. We give you praise for the anointing that you've dispersed on them, the choir and the musicians, that they sing unto the glory of the Lord. They bring you forth, God, through song. We want to thank you for them. Father, now and only now and only then and only time to come will we always praise you for your love, your grace, and your mercy. In the name of Jesus, we all pray. Amen, amen, amen. and amen.